Grow your purpose. Grow your wealth. Grow your impact. Find out how to spend less time in the dental chair and more time on the things you love. Welcome back to the Dental Wealth Podcast. We are back in the studio for another great episode. Uh, with me in the studio, as always, is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Eric J. Morin. I am so glad to be here. I love being in this podcast. Glad to have everyone back again. Uh, we've got a great conversation to be had today, right, Matthew? Yeah, I mean, um, it's something that uh, I'm extremely passionate about that I never thought I'd be passionate about, but I've seen <laughs> enough. Uh, I've seen enough bad instances that's made me kind of passionate about it. But um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the tax, the tax man. And the fact that, you know, we're, we just approached the uh, extended tax deadline. So a lot of you either had everything in place or had a surprise bill or don't really know what's going on and you trust your CPA to make the decisions for you. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on it and start the discussion with, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, tax as a whole when it comes to the dental landscape? Oh yeah, I'm gonna stay out of politics for a little bit. We were just having this conversation before we jumped in that, that we won't get into politics, okay? So we're not going there <laughs> <clears throat> because I've got some opinions. <laughs> but but look, I think what, and so. Gosh, I could take this conversation in a lot of ways, but let me start off by saying this. Loyalty in taxation is not always the best move. So why do I say that? I'm going to give you an example. I'll start with an example first. Um, we have a tax and accounting department at, at Tower. So we have Tower Financial Group that does a lot of tax and accounting. So... Um, we had a doctor who was kind of a smaller practice who was going to sell. And now we told him not to sell. And he wrote us a long email, af email after he sold and said he wished he'd listened to our advice because he made the worst mistake of his life, which is another conversation. But he would have walked away had he listened to Joe's advice with about $1.6 million. He l listened to his current CPA and so we walked away with $600,000. Now, he did that because he felt some loyalty to this person he had worked with. And so he, instead of getting better advice, more sophisticated advice, because it's levels of sophistication, it's not good or bad, it's levels of sophistication. Our CPA that we hired isn't just a dental CPA, which is really kind of not, I've said on this podcast, that some of the lowest in sophistication. Joe's very sophisticated. His team's very sophisticated. And so he was showing this doctor all the things this other CPA missed. And he left that. He, he, was, he decided to follow his current CPA and he put himself in a horrible financial situation because of it. We just had another person that joined Tower and he just, he was expecting about a $600,000 tax bill. He's got a $0 tax bill. And I say this not to promote our tax and accounting because that's not the point. The point I'm trying to make is taxation has a huge effect on your ability to grow, right? When you start to take 30 to 40% of your gross or net profit, and then you take that away, it affects your ability to grow as an organization, which is, I mean, if you lose $400,000 per year over 20 years, like yeah. we could get some Excel, you know, uh, Excel spreadsheet out, but that is... That is monumental. Like that is, it's 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 crazy how much money you just gave up on your net worth. The compound effect of four hundred thousand dollars annually compounded over twenty years is just insane. Your taxes are sophisticated, and while most CPAs inside, especially dental, which I've argued that most of them are, are not great in this industry. I've, I've said it a gazillion times. I stand by it 100%. I have, I've met very few really strong tax CPAs in this environment, period. And you can challenge me on this. I'll be more than happy to, to go head to head with you. I've met very good, very few good tax CPAs in the dental industry. And I stand by that statement. Most of them have very low sophistication. Most of them don't really have any strategies outside of 401k and buying equipment at the end of the year you don't need. And so a lot of people end up overpaying in taxes because they just don't have quality CPAs. And yet, now, actually I'm going to 
and yet they stay with that person long term. Now, to give, yeah. I'm going to back CPAs for a second though and say, hey, listen though, if you took home a million dollars, it's not your tax CPA's fault that you have a tax bill. Okay, <laughs> it's it's fair to say that there's going to be some taxes due. Okay, like I, I I say that because in my life, in my career, in this industry, I've had people go like. Yeah, I, I increased my my. In, I've worked with Tower. I increased my my income this year another seven hundred thousand dollars. And they're like, but I didn't think there'd be any taxes due. I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, you know, you increase your income by seven hundred thousand dollars. There's probably some taxes due. So it's not always a tax CPA's fault to give them some credit. So I'll, I'll back them up in the fact of, or if you give them bad information and you know and those types of things, or you're late to give response. Yeah. So I'll give them. I'll back them up a little bit to say, okay, I beat them up now. I'll, back them up to say, Hey, listen, you got to do your part too because they're compilated financials. So they're garbage in garbage out. But with that said, you have no idea how much taxation affects your net worth. And you sit back and you know, you want to create dental wealth. You want to create a a dental empire. You want to create net worth. You want to create legacy. You want to create impact. Let me tell you what, there are so many loopholes. There are so many moves that you can make from a tax standpoint that you're not taking advantage of. And tax advantages where you can avoid not only paying taxes, but you can give money to charities. You can give people, to, you can impact people. You can do all kinds of things with the money that you're paying the IRS. Even if you want to avoid, you can avoid the taxes and you can, even if you were going to pay taxes, you'd be surprised in that how much of that you can utilize to impact other people, whether they're on your team, whether they're an outside organization. There are so many tax laws that allow you to impact people's lives and allow you to grow your net worth, allow you to reduce your taxation, allow you to, inc- I mean, so many things, but you have to have some sophistication in your tax strategy. And the problem is I see very little, t- I see very little sophistication. In fact, 99.8% of the people that come into tower have come to us with a bad tax strategy. Well, that, maybe, that's, maybe that's aggressive, maybe 99.2. Uh, have come to us with, 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 and missed tax advantages. And it, and, and so there's so many things people can be doing. And it's so interesting to me because when, when we go back and say, Hey, listen, your guys cost you $400,000 for the last 12 years. And I say, you know, it's time to move because you're, you're, you're missing on. Well, you know, that's my buddy, Jim. <laughs> And, you know, I like Jim. Jim and I have been working together for 14 years. Yes, Jim has probably cost you $10 million. I know, but I really like Jim. What in the world is going on to where you, and I'm, look, I'm not, you know, in a suit, by the way, right now, there are people listening to this podcast that are like, he's wrong. My guy's great. I love my guy. And and listen, maybe you do have a great guy guy or gal, you know, you might, but I'm thinking probably not. And, and, And I'm not, I'm just being very honest with you. Most of the time we see complete misses and, and it's so evident. And yet when we say, Hey, you've missed $200,000 of tax breaks here. The first response I get is, yeah, but uh, I don't think I can fire Ted. I'm like, what? Well, or they're just going to go back and tell Ted, the advice we gave them thinking oh that yeah that happens all the time the too yeah 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 that he's gonna miraculously just become a genius tax person it's it's like oh no you've been doing it wrong for the last 20 years and here's the solution to your problem so now i'm going to trust that you're going to be up to date with all the new tax strategies that come out every single year so yep we're good to go we're going to stick or, with Ben. <laughs> or, or 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 ted goes back or, or what this happens all the time too which is like even though they're wrong even though they missed two hundred thousand dollars they don't want to miss that they missed two hundred thousand dollars, so they will literally explain all the reasons why they think they're right, even though it's like no, the tax law clearly states that you can do this. They will yeah. argue it, and they will cost you an extra two hundred thousand dollars just so you don't find out that they made a huge mistake. And they will argue like no, 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 you can't do that. And it's like actually, it's right here in the tax code. You can do that, yeah. and yet people do that. And, and why am I telling you this? Look, I'm not. I just need you to understand we're going into tax season and most of you listening right now are going to overpay. And, and it's just a fact. I mean, most of you are going to, most of you listening right now are overpaying in your taxes. 
And it's fine if you want to give money to Uncle Sam if you want to. I mean, maybe that's your personal philosophy. My personal philosophy is that I'm better off with it in my hands than getting wasted at the federal government level or the state government level. So yep. I'm I'm a much more disciplined investor than the federal government, and so I like to have my own money. <laughs> but if you want to give money and make free donations to the federal government, by all means, go ahead. But I'm going to tell you that most of you are missing it, and you're missing it not... You're missing it because you don't have the sophistication within your tax strategy and and you're putting, look, and I value loyalty and I value relationships. So let me make sure I make that clear too. Like I do value loyalty. I do value relationship. I think those things matter, but it's up to your tax CPA to also increase their sophistication over the years, not just be, not getting CPA, not just get, excuse me, not just getting their CE, but remember the tax code's constantly changing. It's constantly evolving. There's, there's constantly new things that are happening. And if they're not staying on top of those, and by the way, here's how you know if they're staying on top of those. Okay, ready? Here's how you know. How fast is their firm growing? How fast is their firm growing? If they're in the same building they were in 20 years ago, I'm telling you right now that, that you've probably outgrown them. If, 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 if their firm is not growing a steady clip, if they're not adding CPAs, if they're, if they're not growing as a firm, they've been the same for 20 years, I'm just telling you, they're probably missing those things as well. And so, I, I, look, I'm not trying to get everyone to listen to throw away their relationship. I'm helping you to realize that great organizations that are trying to get to the next place who, you know, are trying to invest in building what we call PPE, plant property and equipment. Those are who are trying to add doctors, add hygienists, give bonuses, right? Get a new piece of technology, invest in technology. Th what is three to $400,000 do for that budget, right? What is... When we start thinking about the strategies that you're, that you're, and if you are going to give it away to the federal government because you just believe that, well, then let's just direct it to a charity that you prefer to give it to. Because if you're going to give it, then let's give it to somebody who you can impact. Let's let's give it to somebody that you actually get to to actually be in control of those dona those donations. So it's fine if you want to give money. Let's give money to actually people you care about. That instead of going to some statue or some bridge for some congresswoman out of the state of Vermont or something <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like let's let's actually put it towards something. Now I'm not saying that all federal governments waste it. Money's waste, of course not. But I am saying that there's a lot of pork, is what they call it, in legislation that is a lot of waste. And matter of fact, Elon Musk, one of the things he said is if Trump gets elected, we're not getting into politics. I'm just stating that he says he wants to basically create a commission to look at government spending because it's so inefficient uh, and there's so much waste that he wants to create a new department where they ultimately look at the efficiencies of the federal government because it's so bad. So these people are taking money out of your small business and then they're putting it and wasting it at a level where if you had that money, you could invest. If you had that money, you could create more wealth. If you had that money, you could hire more people. If you had that money, you could, but, but so many of you are not taking advantage of that because you're worried about hurting Jim's feelings. And, and you gotta, you, you can't do that. You owe it. You owe too much to too many people to not upgrade your relationship because you don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Like that doesn't make sense. It, 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 you, you've got to ultimately, and look at, at Tower, we have to consistently grow. We have to get better. We have to add new things. We have to, like all organ, like all organizations and professionals need to continue to develop and, and invest and become more sophisticated. And if they don't, then people will leave because you've hit a ceiling. So it's just important for all of you to hear this. This is so important. And so why do you think, you know, do you know the reason why they created like the tax extension? Does that have anything to do with you know, people that often take advantage of that. Is it because they don't have the right tax advice on the front end or their accounting's a mess so they don't have the books done in time for them to start planning? Is Does that have any correlation as no, far as- No, I mean, I've, you know, I've, I've extended my taxes every year since 2000 and probably 14. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of times it takes, you're waiting for paperwork, you're waiting for information, you're, you're trying to get, you know, you might be waiting for someone to give you something if you have multiple corporations. It's just, mm -hmm. it's just that it takes time. And then ultimately speaking, extension, 
doesn't have anything to do with anything. There's nothing wrong with it. There's okay. nothing wrong with filing, filing a business extension. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. You might just yeah. look at it and say, hey, look, I, I. Now, some people get weirded out, and there's there's rumors that people say, like, the IRS looks poorly on extensions, or it's a red flag. No, it's not. It's not a red flag at all. There's nothing wrong with filing an extension. I know there are people that yeah. are like, if I file an extension, it's the worst thing in the world. No, it's not. You, it's not a big deal to file <laughs> an extension. A lot, a lot of corporations file extensions. There's a lot of paperwork to get together. I, I mean... Myself personally, I've got multiple businesses. I've got investment properties. I've got this. I, there's a lot of documents that I've got to get. Sometimes I don't get yeah. a document. So it, it's it's just one of those things where it takes time sometimes to get all the information together. And and then you, you don't want to rush that. You want to get it done right. And then sometimes mm -hmm. I'm waiting on people to give me a piece of information or something. So nothing wrong with the file and extension. I don't have any problem with anyone filing an extension. I have a problem with them rushing a tax return and overpaying. I have a problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or rush. seeing a surprise bill. Like, yeah. well, there's well, been so many horror stories that I've seen just in the last eight years with the company is just all these accounting and tax problems within the industry. And then it's just sometimes it baffles me when people just want to stay with that person that's just been giving you bad advice for the that's last it, 10 years. It only happens just, in tax. Like it only happens in tax. Like nobody else, there's no other profession um, that, that can do, can continue. Okay, I, I take it back. Weathermen. Like weather yeah. men and women. Like, <laughs> like I, I always laugh at that career because I'm always like, hey, look, it's kind of the only career where you get to copy somebody else's work when you show up and then you can be just a percentage right. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I feel like, you know, hey, there's a 40% chance I'm right. I mean, who gets to do that? Nobody gets to do that but weather people. And then you can watch somebody else's newscast and walk in there and go, yeah, I mean, Jim over at Fox Atlanta said <laughs> that uh, there's a 30% chance of rain. So let's do that. Um, now I'm obviously joking. Someone's yeah. going to write in and be like, my father's a weatherman or something. Don't, don't get sense of, I'm just joking. But it's one of those ones where it's like, if you're costing me that much money, you're fired. Like you're fired. Yeah. Like, like, I'm sorry. But it, and if somebody gives you advice and says, Hey, here's the things you can do now. I'm not talking about somebody going outside the tax code. I'm not talking about things that are, you know, things we have to like, I'm not talking about things that are shady or those. Yeah. There are so many legitimate tax moves you can make. And, and as your net worth goes up, there's more advantages that you can take advantage of. And the bigger your tax bill, the more advantages you can take advantage mm -hmm. of. So if someone's, the advice you've gotten is, hey, put money in a 401k, which no business owner really almost should be putting money in a 401k anyhow that wants to grow. They should do it for their team, but not for themselves. And cause, so that's bad advice, horrible advice. I mean, really bad advice. Um, and the other advice would be, you know, just buy equipment you don't need at the end of the year. If those are the two pieces of advice you've got, and those are your tax strategies, you need to just run. Like, it's just so bad. Like, you're getting the most elementary poor advice you've ever received ever, and you shouldn't be following that advice. So so it's it's one of those things where it's like, why are you listening to somebody who who is not growing their own business at all, who doesn't know how to reinvest in their own PPE. They don't know how to invest in people. They haven't been able to scale. They don't understand marketing investment. They're telling me to put money in a place and locking it up for the next 30 years so I can't get access to it. And if I do want access to it, I got to pay a penalty, even though the the rate of return on a 401k is like five to 7% and my business is doing 30%. So I should take my money out of my business and put it in a 401k and lock up it for the next 30 years and I can't get any access to it. And if I do, I have to pay a 10% penalty. Absurd. So I think I think it's important for people to know, like, yeah. like the advice in dental around tax is just bad. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. And you've got to, if you're going to create a great organization, stop putting your head in the sand because the fact that Jim's now your buddy. Act, I mean, we wouldn't do that in any other relationship. What if, what if all of a sudden my dentist, let's just flip it around clinically and be like, so my dentist, here's what happened. I went in and he extracted the wrong tooth, but that was, you know, he extracted the wrong tooth. Oh, and by the way, he double charged me. And by the way, like on and on and on, I could figure out, you know, a hundred things you know, wrong with the mouth, but I like them. I'm like, I know yeah. that he really took out the wrong tooth and he messed up this crown and he did this and, but Hey, I like the guy. And so I'm going to keep going back to him. You'd be like, what? Like, yeah, I'm going to keep going back to him. I mean, I like, he's a nice personality. We get along. I'm like, yes, but he's doing shoddy work. It's like, yeah, but yeah. I like him. That's, <laughs> it only happens in, in, 
tax CPAs and dental. And I, I don't know why this is, yeah. but it's true. And, and I've been, look, yeah. I've been beating, anyone who's followed me at any point for my entire career, you'll know how much I beat up on dental CPAs because it's all marketing. It's not, there's no, for someone to be like, it's do, it's just different yeah. work and dental. Yeah. It's not, it's not that complicated. It's, it's, yeah. it's some of the easiest accounting there is. And so for someone to be like, well, it's, it's dental. It's not that hard. And the truth is that, yeah. but there is sophistication as you grow on your tax strategy. That is complicated. And yeah. so as you grow, you have to have sophisticated tax mm -hmm. strategy. So I know I'm kind of going on for a little bit of a rant here today, yeah. but the reason <laughs> why is because it, when you see, like imagine if you saw as a dentist, somebody doing shoddy work after shoddy work after shoddy work for decades, and you kept ringing the bell and no one listened to you. You'd, you just get frustrated. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how, why I get into a little bit of a rant around this, because it's like, I've watched so much net worth erosion, business erosion because of poor advice. And when I see that, it makes me passionate because I care about people. And I'm like, why are you yeah. destroying your net worth and destroying your ability to impact people and destroying your, your just so much because of the fact that you like Jim, like that doesn't make yeah. sense. So it makes me want to just scream because I'm just like, his work is bad. Like it's bad. Yeah. Stop going to this guy. Yeah. Well, I'm a CPA. What does that have to do with anything? All of you right now know a bad dentist. All of you right now know a bad dentist. You wouldn't yeah. go refer your friend to a bad dentist because they're working shoddy because they're a nice guy. You would say, hey, listen, <laughs> don't go to Jim, right? Jim, the, you know, whatever. So yeah. it's just something to think about. It's, your dental example is, is great. It's, you know, it might not even be shoddy work. So you could have gone, so last 10 years, you've gone to the same dentist. You've gotten a cleaning, exam, x-rays, you know, you've done that every six months and there's been no issues. And then 10 years later, just by chance, you go to another doctor and they say, oh, you've got a lot of decay in your mouth. Like you've got this problem and this problem and this problem. And yeah, you can trust that advice, but you go back to your dentist and you say, all right, I went to somebody else. I have to admit, they showed me X, Y, Z. And he's like, okay, well, let me take a look at it. And they take a look, it's like, oh yeah, they are right. But let me tell you, I can fix this real quick. And then you're like, okay, I'm more comfortable with you. So you just let the person that just ignored the problem for 10 years fix it. So it's it's the perfect example. And I think if, you know, when I said, let's talk about tax, if you got squirmish in your seat, like if you started getting stressed out when you're listening to this podcast because of tax season, you probably don't have the right tax person. Like you should be kind of excited about, okay, what's how's he gonna help me save in taxes? Like what advice is he gonna give me or she gonna give me? What can I do here to save some money and then invest it over here? Like you should be kind of excited when tax season comes, believe it or not, because you should be ready for all the crazy advice, the good advice that you're gonna receive to help you save on taxes or not overpay this time or underpay this time or get a tax credit, these type of things. So if you've been listening to this podcast and you've been a little squirmish and your hands started getting clammy because you're like, oh, I hate talking about taxes because it stresses me out so much. It's probably because you don't have the right guy giving you advice. Like you're probably not planning accordingly. You're not having your quarterly session with your tax person. You're probably just, you know, kind of staying steady. And that's probably why you get stressed out. So, you know, this isn't, um, you know, a lot of times we'll go into personal development and sometimes we just got to, you know, he beat a dead horse sometimes. And I think tax is a, is a big thing that, you know, I'll always bring up. I always bring up the lack of sophistication around accounting and lack of sophistication around tax work. So if, you, if you're listening to this podcast and it's resonating with you, you need to start looking for a new tax EPA. You just need well, to. The deadline's coming up. As soon as that's over, you should already be planning for who's your next person. Yeah. And if you, if you, if you get unexpected surprises, if you're like, if you're like, I didn't know I was going to owe this much money then you're probably with the wrong tax CPA. Like you just are, like you shouldn't get surprises. Like surprises are not something that should really happen um, for you. They're just not. It's not really hard to figure out what your SMA tax liability is. It's not difficult to have those discussions. It's not difficult to prepare. And it's if you're if no one's educating you on, hey, we, we expect this to be, you know, X amount. And then by the way, there, there's this old math that tax CPAs use, which is we, you know, we are going to estimate 110% of your last year's tax bill. If you work with Tower, we're going to blow by that. <laughs> so you're going to end up having more tax liability if you, and by the way, the, the higher tax liability isn't necessarily bad. I mean, I, you know, I want to pay seven figures in taxes. Like, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a high tax liability and it just means you're more successful. But then how do we negate the tax liability? Now, you might owe seven figures, but you might negate it down to 200 grand. So now, 
Look, I mean, I think you just need to be able to know that you're maximizing the resources and maximizing the people around you so that you're getting great advice. And if, if, if the advice is something that seems shady and really weird, it probably is like, you gotta be careful. And, and we're not going to go into specifics, but Matthew and I were yeah. t- literally talking this morning about a piece of tax advice that I had received that, uh, we thought was quite comical <laughs> and we won't go into that on this, on this podcast, yeah. uh, because I'll confuse people, but the truth is if you're going to become great and you're going to create a great organization that two of the biggest things that will erode your, your, your true net worth over time is taxes and fees is that your portfolio is often destroyed by fees. Now in the investment world, they'll say the two things that erode the portfolio are fees and fear. That's true. People tend to sell low and buy high. Um, but so fees will erode your portfolios. So you have to be careful. And so will fear, but bigger than that, way bigger than that is taxes. The taxes are your biggest erosion of wealth. There is taxes are huge taxes impact me. You're talking about taking 40% of someone's income. You're talking about not making a dollar until almost June. It means you work five months for free. So, I mean, think about that for a minute. I mean, you're, you're almost working half a year for free and then people are telling you you're not paying your fair share, which is quite comical. Um, so you're working half a year for free. So you better think about that, bef- you know, as you start thinking about your tax liability and start to say, I don't want to work a half a year for free, Eric. I know, I know. And as much as you like Jim and Jim's a nice guy, you don't want to work half a year for free. So we've got to negate those taxes. We've got to look at strategies. We've got to make decisions. We got to make investments. We got to know what capital investments we've got to make. We got to make strategic, right? There's so many moves. Now, I'm intentionally not getting into all the nitty gritty of, of capital allocations and charitable contributions and, and reinvestments and tax strategies. I'm, I'm not getting all that because we'll, I could do a podcast on one strategy alone. And, but I think what I'm trying to do is in this podcast is just ring the bell and just say, listen, I'm not trying to beat everyone up. Maybe you have somebody you like, maybe you don't. I'm telling you that I've been in this, in this profession and for almost 20 years, I I just don't know dental CPAs that I'm like, that are that great. Like the vast majority of them are just not good. I tell you that not because I'm trying to beat up someone you like, you know, maybe you have a personal relationship with them. I'm saying it because my job is to help you build the greatest organization possible and impact as many people as possible. And if your wo- if your wealth is being eroded by your biggest fee, which is taxes, and you have no effective strategy to fix that except for buy equipment at the end of the year you don't need, put money in a 401k, then your tax strategy is just, it's it's not sophisticated enough. And it's time to take a look. It's time to have somebody else take a look at that. Um, and I would encourage you to do so. I love it. I think, uh, you know, this is a message everybody needs to hear. Everybody should look at their tax advice and see if they can get better, see if there's any surprises coming up with the deadline uh, approaching. You know, we're this is airing in September, so uh, we're approaching the deadline. So it's a great conversation. Uh, you know, anyone that's watching this, you know, make sure you like, subscribe, go watch us on YouTube. You know, Eric and I try to put on a show when we're uh, uh, visually there too. So the video portion of this, Reese puts a lot of effort into the graphics and everything. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, share it with other people. And thank you so much for always being in the studio with me, Mr. Moore. And we will see you guys next time.